Welcome to another show of Celebrate Life. My name is Gary DeCarlis, and I'm your host. This show is about allowing amazing people, and we all are, to tell their life story while they're alive. The whole impetus behind this show is that uh, having read many obituaries over the years and realizing that there's some amazing people that I never had a chance to meet, I decided to have a show where you can actually meet them and they're still very much vibrant and alive in this world. And so that's it. And I really believe strongly that everyone has a story to tell. And if you would be interested in having your story told, just give me an email at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com and I'll be glad to queue you up for a future interview. If you have any questions for our guest today, again, send me an email at celebratelife0747 at gmail.com, and I'll make sure that it gets to our guest. With that, I am honored to inter introduce you to Dr. Julieta Rushford Santiago. Well, welcome to the show, Dr. Rushford Santiago. Hi, Gary. Thank you. I go by Julieta. It's okay. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, Tell us about your life, and um, you can start wherever you'd like. If you, I know that you're from Puerto Rico, and I'm yeah. sure that has some rich experiences there that that uh, you would like to talk about. But anyhow, it's it's your call, and we can start wherever you'd like. So, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. I ha I am the youngest of four with my twin. So we have an older brother, my older sister, and then an identical twin and I. And I graduated high school a little bit on the earlier side and came to the United States to study. I went to UMass Amherst yeah. and got a bachelor's in exercise science and then decided to pursue my studies in chiropractic school in Georgia. Hmm. And then in Georgia, I met my now husband. We've been together for 30 years, actually, this year. And he's from Vermont. Uh -huh. And that's how I ended up here in, you know, when I graduated school. So in 1994. Hmm. Well, take us back to Puerto Rico, if you would. And what was life like there? And what, um, and what was it like leaving the island? So it's mixed. It's complicated. Mm -hmm. You know, people, the, the thought of Puerto Rico evokes the this paradise with the beach and the, the piña colada relaxation, which is true when you're a tourist. But when you live there, it's a different story. Mm. Although we do have access to that beauty. Yes. Um, and to the rich culture. It's a very warm culture. It's very... Uh, spicy you know and you don't notice that as much until you come to new england mm. and feel the complete opposite of the tone of the culture mm -hmm. <laughs> it was it was definitely a culture shock um but the thing about puerto rico is that you know again i left at 17 so i haven't lived there like my siblings have and my parents, but I left because of the quality of life. No. You know, I grew up with a lot of fear of uh, a lot of fear of somebody wanting to steal from me, somebody wanting to hurt me. And I didn't really get that until later on that I'm like, wait a second, why is there, why are there like three locks on the front door and then a fence, a gate with another lock? And then why is there a gate with a lock the size of a grapefruit going from the kitchen to the sleeping quarters? Like mm. that was normal. But then at some point I'm like, what's out there? What right. are you keeping me from? Why Why are there, you know, um, iron bars on all the windows? I was going to say, I remember iron bars on many of the windows. Yeah. On all the windows and, yeah. and the skylights. So every, every time I looked out, the mm. window for nature mm. it was through these bars these iron bars so at some point 
I'm like, you know, when you walked from the car to the house and when you open the door, you have to, you know, look out and make sure that nobody's, you know, my parents were trying to protect us. Right. But, yeah. and people did steal from the back a couple of times, you know? Mm -hmm. So there's that sense of, I'm not safe in my own home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so being a highly sensitive person as I am, um, and wanting to raise a family in a different matrix yeah. then you know the opportunity arose i mean i did fall in love with my husband i didn't use him to come to her much <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounds like that now that i say it <laughs> um but we met in chiropractic school and we came here i'm like oh my gosh vermont that is wow like it really lined up and Vermont mm. is so the opposite in so mm. many ways. It's clean mm. here. You don't see trash. Right. You don't see stray dogs. Every stray right. dog I've seen in Vermont, I pick up and put in the car right. and, and try to find the owner because I know that they're lost. But in mm. Puerto Rico, that's the norm. You just see mm. the dogs, you know, yeah. you see trash and you see the billboards and there's there's less attention to the things that Vermont and Vermonters pay attention and have the finances to, uh, to do, right? That's, the a, cleaning. that's a key word there, right? Right. So there is profound beauty yeah. in the island. And I have this nostalgic hug in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and it's complicated, right? Because my family's yeah. there, but I live here. So yeah. my parents didn't get a chance to see my son play baseball as he was growing up or go to yeah. his recitals or you know yeah. and it's a choice yeah and right have you I gone was... back to puerto rico oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i i go back you know my family's there and, yeah yeah you know it's as a business owner it's hard sometimes to take time mm. off and close the office and go there yeah. so it's not as often as as i had hoped Yep. Um, but now that my parents are getting older, I'm I'm really trying to make an effort to 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 fly a little bit more often. Well, that's good. So tell me about spicy. He said, you know, the culture there is spicy. What does that mean? I know well, family you, means a lot in Puerto Rico. That I know. Yes, but people it's it's open. Like I said, it's there's there's this openness of 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 your bubble so for example you like i go here to a medical appointment and i enter the waiting room and nobody acknowledges me acknowledges me it's so isolating and so mm. it's just so you Girl. just feel so yeah. alone i feel mm -hmm. so alone within all these people as mm. a contrast you can enter any public place in puerto rico whether it's a bus a restaurant a uh, medical appointment and you just say out loud one of these buenas tardes you're just kind of greeting everybody and then it's met with bueno dia buenas tardes and there's mm. this sense of like oh somebody saw me mm. my presence made made this person notice me yeah and here everybody and now with their phones uh, like this <laughs> like it's i'm invisible and yeah. and, and that yeah. that actually you know it hurts a little mm, bit you know sure. like i feel not seen and and it yeah. hurt the most when my son was in sports and we would go to a baseball game and these are families that we saw every day for practice or multiple times a week yeah. for games over years yeah and i would arrive at the field and not one person would greet me. Not one person would say, Hola, Julieta, buenas tardes. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. It was like, and, and at first, time, in Puerto Rico, there's a word for that. It's come mierda. It's your stuck up, you know? Mm, like, mm. Who, like, you're like this. Yeah. Like, right. These people are like, oh, my gosh. They, they, they're not even looking at me. You know, they're too whatever. Right, right. Uh, and then. It took me a long time to realize that that's just the culture here. It's just the yeah. culture. But but what happens is now, now I'm the stop up one. I'm the one who ignores people because I'm like, well, you know, I'm just in my space here. You know, I don't know if they want me to say hi or not say hi, you know. Mm -hmm. And it 
it's confusing mm. and hard sometimes. I go to Puerto Rico I, now and people talk to me. I'm like, you're in my bubble. That mm. was this is my bubble here. Mm. You know? Mm. But it was it, it was a huge shock when I first came here. Yes. And I've been here for three decades, you know, just about. And now I'm kind of like I I feel my I feel my spiciness, my yeah. my passion has gone down. My spiciness has gone mm. down. My, 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 you know that Puerto Rican zest. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't. It's hard for me to find it now. Yeah, yeah. And there is a big beauty in, in New England. Oh my gosh, it's such a strong, you know, very um, grounded culture, mm -hmm. and it's very distant. Yeah. yeah. Um. So it's complicated. It, yes. It's. It, it's. It's. Yes. I have to marry them. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it, it. I can. I feel the impact it had on you was like, just yeah. dramatic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It. It was. Mm. People don't touch here, even pre-COVID, mm. right? And if you know, in Hispanic Oops. cultures, there's more of that 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 come like we kiss yeah. every time we see each other it's just a kid it's it's assumed yeah you see somebody whether you've met them once or a million times and you kiss you know i, I couldn't teach that to my son i couldn't mm. teach him to kiss mm. me on the cheek when mm. he says hi and when he says goodbye mm. because he doesn't see it here yeah so yeah. And he's in, he, you know he's a new englander Yes, and there's this space I can't get my son to kiss me on the cheek, hello and goodbye. How quick we can lose our culture, you know? Yeah, that, that, yeah. One and generation. he doesn't. Right, right. And he didn't. You know, it's not part of the the how people behave here. So I believe that we learn a lot, right, by what's around us. Yeah. And he didn't get to see that part. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Mm -hmm. Um, when you were a little girl, still in Puerto Rico, what were your dreams? When you, what would what did you fantasize? What am I going to be when I grow yeah. up? Well, <laughs> that's funny. That's a funny question. A part of me wanted to be a nun. Hmm. I wanted. I I would put the towel over my head and pretend that I am a nun. Mm -hmm. And you know, I I will share this. Um, which is a little bit heavier, but now I understand that my desire for that, that connect, that solid, that, that internal solitude and connection to the divine came from some childhood abuse that I did not, I was not aware of it until mm. later in life. So yeah. Yeah. I, I can see now why I crave that sense of, of safety. Yeah. Right. Um, and belonging but no I've always my my dad is a surgeon and okay. he has he would be phenomenal to interview oh my gosh he's his his CV is this is like two bibles um <laughs> he developed the kidney transplant program of the island oh my goodness um, and you know so I grew up around that medical paradigm mm. Mm. and a part of me resisted it it just a part of me questioned and 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 there was, there was something incongruous with the yeah. paradigm of medicine and some inner knowing of life and healing mm. and when i found chiropractic i'm like oh my gosh i'm home this is it so, you know the yes. idea that that we have this innate wisdom inside of us that takes a dead hunk of meat and turns it into a beating heart cell that you mm -hmm. cut yourself and your body finds a way to, to heal and suture the skin. And, mm. and, and it was all orchestrated by the nervous system. And that all made sense to me. So I, I really wow. um, in, uh, embraced the holistic philosophy of this uh, career of chiropractic as a mm. way to enhance health, right? Yep. But it's very opposite than medicine. But what I've learned after two cancer diagnoses in my family is that there's room for both. 
but okay. there's very important room for both. You for know, both. medicine does not offer health at all. It's mm-hmm. a misnomer. Medicine mm-hmm. saves lives. Medicine gives us a ch- second chance. It repairs. Right. Healing is a completely different topic. Mm. And healing is achieved with taking care of your spine, taking care of your teeth, taking care of your diet, taking care of your muscles, right? Mm. They're, they're two completely different offerings Interesting. that they save and help people. They're just, they're, they're not the same thing, right. right? You can't talk about medicine as health and healing because it isn't. It's about buying time. It's about uh, uh, saving lives. Uh-huh. So anyway, so he and I went through, you can imagine, a little yeah. bit of a clash, <laughs> especially in chiropractic school. I was all full of it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, part of that was chiropractic school itself can be very anti-medicine. And for to our defense, medicine has been very anti-chiropractic for, for right. 100 years. But anyway, the bottom line is, as time passes, uh, my dad and I are extremely close and we are able to, to see each other's truths and, uh, joke about it a lot mm. and just mm. see each other in, in what we bring. Interesting. That's wonderful. What a nice mm-hmm. marriage of daughter, dad yeah. type thing. Yeah. yeah. And wow. Yeah. Huh. And, um, I don't want to go with that. So do you bring some of that, your culture into your practice? <laughs> um, it, I would have to ask my patients that. Okay. Um, so okay. at first, when I first came to the States, especially Vermont, that I'm a professional, you have a, my, my title of doctor and I'm supposed to be all formal and stuff. So I tried to, I try to hide my accent a lot mm. and it's hard. My, my twin sister, actually, for some reason, she picked up the accent of Pittsburgh. She studied in Pittsburgh for a while. So her English and my brother's English is really good, but you know, I have a little bit of a thick accent and I don't know. I think like Beautiful. 15 years ago, I just said, you know what? I'm done. I'm just done. This is how I speak. You know, <laughs> if you don't understand what I said, ask me to repeat it because I have to ask you all the time to repeat stuff because I don't understand your English. There you go. <laughs> so at some point I just went, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. This is how I talk. <laughs> um, and, you know, with my patients, um, I, th- I think, I think inevitably I do, you know, I, I, I I bring a little bit of 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 humor and I call it a pattern interrupt. You know, it's like you expect things to go this way, and here I come and just throw something completely different, or I make I make them laugh a lot. It just uh, you know, like and nice. and I think I do bring that 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 getting in there, right? Mm-hmm. That 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 holding. Uh, I think part of that is the culture of just kind of like being more, I don't mean to insult no, people no, here no. in New England, but it's a mm. little bit more personable and warm. Let's just call uh, it that. Right. Okay? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think my patients do um, appreciate that, but it, it's interesting you bring that question because a part of me being Hispanic, being from Puerto Rico, being a woman, mm-hmm. uh, for the first few years in practice, I had like a little bit of a chip on my shoulder. Like I had to, I had to prove that I knew stuff. You know oh, that sure. even though I was, you know, very okay. educated, very yeah. um, accomplished in chiropractic school, right? Um, but I'm a female in a male-dominated career as well. Back then, chiropractic right. in Vermont which I'm just going to name it. I'm just going to say it, right? Huh. But Puerto Ricans are not necessarily seen in a very high light because we're a colony, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So then I I would try to, I, I felt like I had all these 
maybe they were self-imposed. Who knows? Maybe people didn't care. But I felt that as a female Puerto Rican doctor, I had to work extra hard. I had to prove myself more. And now Mm. I'm a lot. I mean, after 30 years of being in practice, I'm like, you know, I know stuff. (laughs) If (laughs) This is what I know. If you want it, great. If you don't, you can go see another chiropractor. Um, but, and it's, and, you know, it, this is a, a very white, not very diverse culture in Vermont. Yep. Yep. So not many people are used to, especially back then in the early nineties, mm-hmm. not many people who talked differently and I look white, right? I'm white. And people would say, oh, but you don't look Puerto Rican, which mm-hmm. I just feel like it's, it's just, if, if you're listening to this, just don't. Just don't say you don't look Puerto Rican, please, because um, it's right. it's insulting. Yeah. You know, like the, the yeah. Puerto Rican race is uh, the the white Spaniard who conquered the island, you know, the black influence from Africa and yeah. the native Taino Indians, which were the indigenous mm-hmm. copper color skin. Right. So that's right. That's kind of how Puerto Ricans are are defined so when 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 people heard my accent they want to place me they want to place me where are you from mm-hmm. right and then and then i i've learned that i don't have to answer that question that's right at this age before yeah. it's like oh, i have to divulge it so once i said i'm puerto rican you could feel the oh mm-hmm. i thought you were blank i'm like f you you know mm-hmm. oh, i'm right here right you know Right. So, so there's there's complexities to being Puerto Rican in Vermont, yes. you know. Um, yes. And for a long time, I you know I, you know, don't talk because you can't tell if you see me. But if I open my mouth, then uh, you can tell. You know. Yeah, so yeah. It's like yeah. my little secret. It's my little mm. secrets. But the thing is, now I use this secret in Puerto Rico, or when I travel to other countries too, because people think that I'm American. And they start speaking Spanish, and I'm like, I know everything. Else. I I whip oh, out it. I whip out a Spanish like, "Ay, no me diga, de verdad, buenos días." You know what I'm saying? Like I have this, this dual secret that I can whip out <laughs> whenever right. it's convenient. <laughs> have you, um, when you see someone else from another culture, especially a woman, do you take a special interest in wanting to know? how she's doing and offering any support that you can give her? You know, I, I wouldn't say that I, that I do that Mm -hmm. any more favoring other cultures. I just kind of do that period, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, um, I would notice actually that's, let me sit with that for a second. So yeah, there's a woman at Trader Joe's and you know, she has her accent and we've kind of known each other. It's different. Yeah. I do ask. I do ask, how's your family in Poland or how's your family in Bosnia? Because um people it's hard when you're here and you have family somewhere else. Yes. It's a reality that if a lot of us know, but we're still few. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you're right. There is a little bit of a commonality of experience there mm-hmm. that That's may a, make me. Yeah. I mean, when you think of it, um, so I moved from New Jersey to Vermont, not a big deal, but it was a big deal. I mean, but when, if I was moving from another country to the United mm-hmm. States, that's, that's, that takes courage. It takes chutzpah, mm-hmm. as they would say. Yeah. That's um, that's leaving a lot and going to what you don't know, no. uh, but all the familiar things are gone all of a sudden. That's yeah. tough. Plus language. Plus language, right? Plus food. Yeah, right. You know, like I came here and it was all pizza and pasta and burgers, right. and I'm like, oh my god, like I really missed the rice, the beans, the the. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom would send us packages of puerto rican it was such a treat nice. to be in a college dorm and and open that 
with you know uh, that Puerto Rican meal. Yeah. So it, it's it's different. I mean, nowadays in Vermont, you can find a little bit more of that food here, just mm -hmm. a little bit more. But yeah, it's um, it, it's it's it is a little bit of a shock in many areas. Food absolutely. being one of them. Yeah, absolutely. How are your what are your siblings doing? How would how are they? Are they still on the island? So my brother lives in New Mexico, oh. and then my older sister is in Puerto Rico and has been there for the most part, and my twin is in Puerto Rico now as well. Okay. Yeah, but there was a point where my sister was in Oregon, my brother in New Mexico, my other sister in Georgia, and me in Vermont. So when my parents <laughs> visited, they, we called it the tour. And they had to... <laughs> I'm going wow. to go to a tour and visit all of you. That's quite a tour. Yeah. <laughs> Did they, yeah. uh, any of them go into the medical field? No. Oh, no. Okay. I am the closest one as a chiropractor. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, well, great. Um, who were your mentors as a, a young person? Who, who, you know, I think one of the questions I ask is, uh, Marion Wright Edelman wrote this wonderful book and, she talks about lanterns that her lanterns in life, the people who lit the path to her future. Who were mm -hmm. those for you? Um, I think my dad, but not for the reasons that you would think. Mm -hmm. It was my dad because I wanted to be in the healing field, but not that in that iteration. Yes. Um, and so that kind of put a question in me with that hunger of wanting to explore a different path. Mm -hmm. But with that said, he um, has such a tremendous uh, presence in the island it has helped so many mm. people that you know people used to have to fly to the states to get a transplant right. and you know how expensive that is i mean right. it, so having having a transplant program in the island was huge for so many levels so right. so yeah i i've been inspired by his um altruistic um desire to help and to leave the world better than when we came in. That's one of the main things that he has mm. taught me is just mm. wherever you go, just try to leave it just a tiny little bit better than when you got mm. there, you know, and, um, and, and that sense of wanting to serve mm -hmm. and help. Um, of course, his way is his path he sees people die. He has to give yes. people the news that their loved one died, you know, mm. as a chiropractor, you know, knock on one, that's, I offer different things. Right. Um, right. But I'm very inspired by his poise mm. and his contribution to society mm. and him as a human being. He's, he's a truly remarkable man who has overcome a lot. Mm. Um, again, Hispanic doctor, right? Yeah. It, it's yeah. harder. Yeah. It's harder, even though he has, you know, ran organizations or been part of international organizations in Latin America and been invited to the United States to take some positions of, of distinguished positions. He decided to stay in the island. Hmm. because hmm. he he felt like it was his duty to to contribute to his fellow you know Puerto Rican Puerto Rican wow yeah. What a so wonderful... yeah I would say my dad yeah how special yeah. that is yeah huh well good and now you have a family you have a I son do. yes yeah. he's uh he's 21 mm-hmm and baseball player. Really? Mm -hmm. He um he's a um he's amazing. Wow. 
He's amazing. Proud mama. Yeah. He pit, I, I'm going to so, brag. I'm going to brag. Yeah, okay. please do. This is a bragging moment. That's right. Uh, he he pitched a perfect. Do you know? Do you know baseball? Oh, I love baseball. Yeah, he pitched a perfect game oh, wow. uh, a couple of summers ago. Wow! Throughout, you know, it was like right after COVID or during COVID. One of those, I can't remember. Everything's a blur. Um, and you know, his pitching took his team to regional championships in Bristol when he was in Little League and. So he's wow. a, he's an amazing human. So is, he, so is his baseball, is he through college now or is he in the minor leagues? What is he? He's what? in college now. Uh -huh. at, uh, he's at UVM actually. Oh, and oh well, they got now, rid they of baseball. They don't have baseball. I know. So oh. they're do he's doing a club. He's doing yeah, club right. baseball. Okay. And that's one of my my highlights of my life is to see him play, to see him pitch. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, very, very rewarding. Oh, that's wonderful! Is he right-handed, left-handed? Right. Uh huh. Right-handed. Yeah, and my husband is a chiropractor as well. So we met in chiropractic school. He's a Vermonter. He's mm -hmm. the last of nine. He has stories for you too. <laughs> uh, Irish family, uh -huh. Irish Catholic. They call it right. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he is now, he specializes in pregnant women and children only wow. because, you know, the wow. integrity of the spine yes. is critical for the, the hips to open, to allow the baby, you know, those, those are all joints right. yep. and muscles and that's all coordinated by the nervous system. Wow. So, and when babies come out, they have misalignments in the spine that can you know create disruption mm -hmm. to that 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 neural flow from the brain and it, it just goes like this and he's so funny he wins them over he has them giggling and everything um <laughs> but right now he's um he's he's the head of the holistic health sciences program at mm. northern vermont you what is northern vermont university right now right right um, and it's a phenomenal program that That's wonderful. It, it's honestly, it's so needed right now mm -hmm. with people um, being so stressed. And these kids in college, they are so stressed. They've been through so much. Yes. So teaching mindfulness practices, uh, I think it's life changing, to be it's honest. Wonderful. And I would love to see UBM and bigger colleges offer this type of program because right. it, 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 in invites the students to do some self introspection and to use uh, things that are accessible to uh, all of us like breath movement mm. nature as a way to self regulate and then they can choose to pursue it and be a naturopathic chiropractor a massage therapist a reiki practitioner you know so it's a beautiful foundation of holistic sciences wow that's wonderful what's mm -hmm. your what do you have a specialty in your practice i do i work with trauma oh my mm -hmm. goodness wow it, my specialty is trauma um and and so what happens gary is that one of the things that we've learned is that the spine the spine is like a recorder and you go through life and the spine is keeping track of it mm. and it saves it right there. Mm. And then if it doesn't get addressed, it's just all this energy is gone to this story of stress and tension that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 40 right. years ago. Right. And that's interfering with your present life because your nervous system thinks that you're going through that stress that happened 10 right. or 40 years ago. Right. So we can read people's spines and say, hey, what happened when you were eight? What oh, my goodness. When you were goodness. 15, what happened? And, and people say, oh, that's the year that I got divorced or I was in a car accident or I lost a, a loved one or I got ill. Like there's always something. They may not remember at that moment. Um, so then what I help people do is kind of help create a shift 
in the mind through the spine. Like I don't mm. process people's stuff. You know, I have people with intense histories. I tell you, sometimes um, I just need to come home and just kind of defuse because yes. bad things happen a lot. Yeah. And we and we don't talk about it, which is okay, but but it's there. Yeah. So people come to me with neck stuff, and I'm like, what happened here? And I, I kid you not, this woman said, oh, that's the year that I attempted to take my life. And I'm like, oh, my God, wow. that's so intense. But the stress is here, so they think. They think the neck pain is about the neck and it's not. It's about hidden stories that the nervous system has talked and filed away as a way to survive. But then they show up as back pain, neck pain, tension. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, so my goal, even though it's not to fix the back pain, neck pain, my help, my, my goal is to support the person's nervous system in releasing and unpacking some of the these this baggage of stress, mm. tension, and trauma, so that they can, you know, lead a, a yes. better life with more ease and peace. Wow! Would you recommend um, like psychotherapy for patients of yours that have gone through a lot of trauma, and you're working with them? Uh, well, I think they go hand in hand. Yeah, they do. Because yeah. I don't do psychotherapy. Right, I can't right. process. I'm not trained. Right. But a psychotherapist is not trained in helping the, the exactly. fifth vertebra go back to place. Exactly. So this is the, the, the finally, I'm hoping yeah. that especially after COVID, where, where trauma is kind of being a little bit more normalized and mental health is being more in the surface, yeah. that the mental health profession sees that yes, there's a gift there, but we gotta, we have to address the body. Mm -hmm. We have to address specifically the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Because for example, when that second neck bone is cranked to the right, that's going to create a head heart shut off. Right. It's just the head heart connection is not there. It's a people are here, right. no heart. Yep, yep. And it doesn't matter how much you talk about it until that second neck bone doesn't go back home that connection is not going to happen. Mm. So this is where the body mind, the, the true holistic care for mental health is addressing the mind and you got to address the body and the nervous system directly. Absolutely. And nothing compares to holistic chiropractic that aligns specifically the the cord the spinal cord which affects the brain because people tend to separate for some reason right because we we tend to separate <laughs> things the brain from the spine people talk oh the brain the brain the brain the brain but guess what guess what's attached to the brain the spine <laughs> right. so i can i can tug on the spine down here and create a change in the brain so a lot it is it's powerful it's been very rewarding a very mm. rewarding career when people mm. say how much the work that my husband and I have um, in practices like ours mm. have helped people, you know, find more peace, you know, mm. um, for, I have a woman, she said, Oh, I forgave my mom. I have another person mm. who said my son was, was having suicidal ideations. And since he started to see you, he's, He's shifting and he's more open to working with his therapist. Get it? Wow. That's the combination of the two. Yeah. So I'm very, I feel like I have, I have contributed to um, leaving the place better than when I came. And, mm. and, and I'll, sh I'll share a little bit more. I, I did go through cancer uh, mm. in 2019. Mm. Um, and that was two years into my son's cancer. So, wow, wow, it's it's been intense. He was diagnosed with leukemia, and that's a three and a half year treatment for boys. And he was fifteen mm. at the time. Wow. And two years into it, then I got diagnosed with cancer. And there, I had complica He had complications. I had complications. My poor husband. God bless him. He had to. There was a time where he would be upstairs in the fourth floor in the children's hospital with my son receiving chemo and then just come downstairs because I was receiving chemo. My goodness. Um, but there was a time where I said, I may not walk out of here. This may mm. be it for me. You know, 
And there mm. was this sense of like, I'm not in control. I'm not in control. Right. I'm not in control of, of my life. Yep. And, and in that moment, thankfully, I felt you did it. You did well. Mm. You, you, mm. you helped people. Mm. You uh, made an impact in people's lives and that mm. brought me a lot of peace. So I'm very, mm. I'm very happy and grateful and blessed to be able to say that sentence, yes. you know? Yes. Um, thankfully I made it out of the hospital and uh, I think the biggest, um, not lesson affirmation Mm -hmm. is how this life is mine but not really right 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 and keeping things in perspective right so yep. the fridge breaks that's right i've gone through worse <laughs> not that the fridge is broken but right. i've gone through a lot worse you Absolutely. know it's like keeping things in perspective and honestly just trying to just stay in this moment and then this moment and then this mm. moment, that's what helped me make it through my mm. son's cancer is um, just staying here, staying here, not thinking ahead, not thinking past. It's very Zen. Yeah. Trauma yeah. can be very Zen. Being in the present. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Did not that you... I recommend it as a spiritual practice, but. <laughs> right. But life has a way of throwing things at us, doesn't it? That we, uh, you don't plan for. Um, yeah. And it sounds like you handled it beautifully. Wow. Yeah. And being there for your son at that point must have been extremely hard yeah. and yet important. Um, yeah. I and, feel that his cancer journey prepared me for mine. Because hmm. I probably, when I got the diagnosis, I just said, this is nothing compared hmm. to being told that your only child has cancer. It's nothing. I don't care. Hmm. You know what I'm hmm. saying? It's it's and, so different yeah it's so different to hear the diagnosis yourself than to hear for your only child yeah. our world crumbled we can imagine it, and and that's where medicine came in that's part of my story yes medicine you, saved his life did you um did you get chiropractic um at, during your time did you Oh, you, well, we always do. Always do. Okay. It's yeah, just okay. part of our, yeah. it's part, you know, you exercise, you eat healthy, you get adjusted. It's just yeah. part of it. Part of your life. Um, yeah. It just helps your nervous system kind of cope a little bit better. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, I'm and so your grateful. Fa your father. My father came. Did he, did he come? Yeah. Was, he came like, several times. God mm. bless him. Mm. He and his and his wife, they came and I remember one time I was in the hospital and, and like I said, I was having complications and they pulled a couch and they slept right next right next to me. Wow. And this was a couple of years ago. So it was wow. um and because he's a medical doctor, he was able to connect with the medical doctors here and find out yeah. information and it was yep. it's very handy to have a medical doctor in your back pocket. It sure is. <laughs> Very grateful for that. That's wonderful. Huh? Yeah. Well, so when you think about your life and what, if you were to um, share some wisdom or about it to others, what would you say? Well, that's hard to say because I don't, I don't, I'm still in the past. Yeah. I haven't figured life out. Um, for me, I don't have pearls of wisdom. Mm -hmm. I have my experience, which is I try to hold myself mm -hmm. with compassion and grace mm -hmm. as I try to navigate life. Well, that's that. That's yeah. nice. Uh, that I don't know if you would call that pearls of wisdom, but it's a beautiful thing to say. Yeah. 
Thank you, Gary. I do want to be mindful of time. I have a few more minutes and I have okay. to go see patients. Okay, very good. Anything yeah. anything you want to say as a, a, a summary? Have any awards that you've won over the years? I have. I have, but they're not that important. I think my biggest, and I'll leave this for my son, I think my biggest accomplishment is is giving birth mm -hmm. at home alone in the woods with him and my husband. It was just my husband and I, no midwife, no medical wow. doctor. We were wow. in, the, in the woods in a cabin in Huntington with our white German shepherd. And I think about that. That's the painting wow. I have here is the story of his birth. Oh, my God. And people ask me, you know, what is, what is your biggest accomplishment? And and I come back to that moment and that decision of, you know what? My body knows how to do this. And, and birthing another human being, mm. you know, just in the sanctity of, of my marriage with my husband. Yes. Uh, in that privacy of 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 our of that nucleus, with it was it was the the more time passes, the more I see how ballsy that was, right? How yeah. Yeah. courageous, how intimate, yeah. and how it also set the foundation for our son, you know, like, mm -hmm. like we did this, we got you, we got mm -hmm. you, we, you, you're birthed here with yeah. my husband and I, it's, yeah. you, you weren't taken away from me to yeah. do tests and stuff, you know, right. you came right to my chest, you got adjusted is the first thing my husband put him uh -huh. on my chest and adjusted his upper neck before knowing what his gender was. Amazing. Amazing. So I, for me, yeah. I would say that that's my, that's profound. My, my, that's my biggest award is having yeah. had the experience of doing that, having a partner that supported that yes. and uh, uh, the imprint of that um, entry to the world Yes, and how it shaped my son's nervous system is, Amazing. I think my crowning glory. That's wonderful. No pun intended. Pun intended, right? The baby crowns. <laughs> Crowning. Okay. <laughs> no. And and I and listening to you talk about your son a little bit, um, that deep love, that deep bonding continues right till today. There's no question mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. No and question he's blessed about that. to have you and your husband as parents. Thank he you. won the lottery of life. Thank you. Yeah. Storm, listen to him. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. He's not gonna watch this show. Um, maybe later on. But anyway, yeah. Gary, thank you for My this pleasure. space. Thank you um for for your your gentle nudging to tease out a little bit of the stories of my life. I appreciate that. And let me know if there's anything I can do to support you and the program. I will love to send people your way. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for being a guest today.